No, he doesn't have All a right, card deck. Looks like Oh, we're casting their match. So Oh perfect. Cool. I just brought his deck list up too. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> Good timing. Okay, so I have Crozier's lists up on stream. Okay, I'm just going to pull them up on my screen anyways, because I don't know. Yeah, so Crozier bringing Fruits of Yuzgith, Strategic Withdrawal, and Second Wind. The Fruits deck looks pretty similar to something similar to like what Red Dream was playing earlier in yep. the season. Playing Haunt, Seems... a Nero, uh, Igni instead of Yurden, but aside from that, it's that same sort of archetype with Kearney Haunt. Yep. Uh, seems pretty standard for that. Got a couple of consumes to make sure that your ethereal doesn't destroy you. Um, and otherwise, it does the big old smork a -rooney. <laughs> Well, it doesn't really smork, but yeah. Then there's um, Strategic then... Withdrawal Ball. With... with coup de gras too which yeah. i think is becoming somewhat unusual to do both of those um definitely a pretty interesting list has to play a lot of bronzes he's not playing yoachim which makes sense because he's got so many bad targets for it um is playing spies he plays ramon and, and a single impera enforcers um he's also playing the art fan cross moment so he's got the whole soldier package going on um, definitely a pretty interesting take. Um, curious to see how it goes. Especially playing Koo with no Joachim is, uh, is very interesting. Yeah, looks like the Koo is mostly for just whatever you can mage torture. There's no Roderick, yeah, or, I guess. Yeah, uh, or you, I guess use Fergus on that. Fergus too, is yeah. Um... Little note about uh, for people who are unaware of this: um, if you are in a match with, uh, like a, a mirror match between spies lists, and someone usurpers first, the other person can use Fergus to make all their operatives spying, and then usurper them all back. Uh, yep. This is particularly doable with strategic withdrawal, as you can bounce whichever combo piece you've already used. Yep. And lastly, we have the second win list, but who cares about that? We're probably not going to see it. So uh, yeah, <laughs> notable thing I guess is that he's running War of Clans and double Uncray Warrior. Sure, um, sure. And must have cut something for that. But I don't know what. Then Tezlis, we have Fruits of Yisgith, No Haunt, Yurden, and Drega Queen. A little bit weird. And Drega Queen. Oh, she also has double Bone Talisman and double Necker. Yeah, this is very so going... swarmy take on yeah. the Gurney list. Also kind of interesting to be running two Bone Talismans rather than using, like, Triss Tally or something, which I feel like is a very common way to use Bone Talisman. Yeah, um, Bone Tal... So one of the things about Gurney with Ethereal is when you have the Gurney Ethereal package going, you're not actually losing a point when you play a special card like it used to be. Like, in the past, Gurney decks were heavily disincentivized, disincentivized uh, from playing special cards because you lose your Thrive every turn that you're playing a special. But now, right. since you have Ethereal to just consume the fruit and the Thrive doesn't matter at all, that matters a lot less. So you get to see lists like this start to make a little That's bit true. more sense. Yeah, although I'd be concerned about like filling Rose with this list. Um, Possibly. I don't know. Depending I on how the I'd have to try it. Out. Definitely something that I might like try on stream at some point. This list is cool. Yeah, agreed. Uh, uh, definitely very interested to see how it performs. Uh, and then we've got an Uprising list with Varaxis. Is th this is, in fact, Devotion? No, it's not. No. Uh, uh Karak Marines, yeah it is. It's gotta be. No, it isn't. It's got Bomb Heaver. Whoa! What? Karak Marines? Okay. With no so, devotion, just playing the five. So Wait, this Karak gonna... over Royal Guard. Okay, I'm gonna throw out a, a theory here, which is that Tia constructed this as a devotion list, and then at the last minute it was like, oh, I probably should throw Bomb Heaver in here. And kind of forgot. Maybe this is intentional. I don't know. It's is it possible this is intentional. It looks like a list that forgot that bomb heaver uh, to add bomb heaver until the last uh, minute and yeah. decided to wanted that. That's what it sounds like. Because character Marine would just be like a basically a strictly worst kid of any sergeant, right? Because you can't split the boosts for your scythemen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, or at least a, se a second royal guards is like make more sense. Sure, sure. Um, 
Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> oh no. So so this is definitely going to be like a pretty uh, long round focus list. It's running Dandelion and Visigoda, um, and Donamir of Troy. So having a lot of long round power there. The short round is going to be pretty heavily dependent on things like uh, Amphibious Assault, Veraxis, Bloody Baron, uh, and Prince on Stays, I guess. So definitely interesting to see how this list performs. Um, and then she has a second win list that doesn't look like a lot of the others. Um, it's running a Neuromancy Wild Boar and double Greatsword. So this is definitely leaning more on the Greatsword side of things, uh, not playing like Skordal or Devotion or anything like that. And a single Squirrel! Oh, the Squirrel. Yeah, in general, seems to be leaning a little bit more towards wackier or engine-focused lists with the Greatswords, yeah. the Visigoda, and the Bone Talisman. Definitely an interesting right. lineup. Yeah. Uh, pretty excited to see how this goes. Crozier you're bringing Elfgard Spies. I wouldn't really call what he brought a Spies list. It's a... Uh... Um, Tia and Crozier both banned SK. Uh, she's yeah. on red. Okay. Now we're just going to wait for the game to start, I guess. Waiting for our invite. Zero ST decks across all the participants? Uh, I don't think so. I can check pretty easily. One thing that was like a little annoying is that now uh, Javis brought that I ambush. Uh, Decklists were submitted in screenshot form instead of library link form, so like getting any kind of data out of this tournament is going to be so much harder. Maroth brought Echo. Mr. Habla brought Precision Strike. Nick R brought Forge. Yeah, people playing ST are pretty undecided on what they want to do with it. Yeah. Uh, Sir Gur 3X brought Dead Eye Ambush. I call him Sir Grax, but I don't know if that's right. <laughs> that's the first time I'd seen the username. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think he's an Italian player? Maybe. Zwer brought Echo. And that's it. Man, I'm glad I made these graphics. Makes things so much easier. Um. Yeah, so just letting them know we're, uh, we're all set. Yep, yep, um yep. yeah, pretty pretty excited for this match. It's gonna be some uh some spicy stuff. Oop, there's the invite. Hey. Okay. Let me switch views. Bam. Alright. It only took another hour for our second match. <laughs> now Tia and Crozer are pretty regular pace players, I'd say, so this won't be Lightning Gwent like last round, but probably won't be a uh, a bear like the other <laughs> match. It won't be like a, a Green Knight game. Probably won't be a Mr. Concrete game either. <laughs> Mr. Concrete. Uh, my favorite user game. Concrete, man. <laughs> His power oh. is to sheet con liquid concrete from his hands. It is not useful in day-to-day -day life. Maybe it is, though. It's the kind of thing like, like you wouldn't know how useful it is yeah. until you have it. That's true. See someone littering? Just slap a bunch of concrete on them. <laughs> no, just cover the litter with concrete. It's like you're a street cleaner. Except the streets just keep getting bigger whenever you clean them. Yeah, but no one will notice. Surely no one will notice. <laughs> Surely not. It is pretty crazy how, like, city... Well, I think, like, cities like London actually, like, went up because people just built on top of a bunch of garbage and, like, crap. I believe it. Uh... Oh, you could fill up potholes? Yeah. That's definitely a useful superpower in day-to-day -day life. There's no way. 
filling potholes with concrete? I thought you were supposed to use asphalt. But you can do it so much quicker. <laughs> True. Look, you do programming. You know how important efficiency is. Yeah, sometimes you gotta patch it with something quick and dirty. Yeah, sometimes the dirty solution is just the right solution. And by sometimes, I mean anytime you don't need to go back a month later and look at the code again. Yeah, it's like pretty crazy to like look at my own code from a while ago and be like, man, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, although it's definitely not as crazy as like we had this uh this developer at my company who for I'm gonna call uh I'm gonna call him Kevin. His name wasn't Kevin, but uh he was a contractor from a, a different firm and uh he wrote a bunch of code that uh was confusing <laughs> and every time i come across his code and i'm like wait this makes no sense wait get blame who wrote this was it kevin oh, and then no. I'll look at the guy and be like kevin get blame uh get blame is great i mean usually it's, it's primary use is like asking the person who wrote it what what's happening but uh, like kevin blame doesn't shame. work for us anymore so it's just me being like i'm justified in not understanding this <laughs> Oh, man. I'm, like, half glad and half, like, kind of sad that I never went into, like, software engineering. Like, getting an actual job in it. Half glad, because I know there's, like, these miserable things that come alongside it. But pretty glad that I don't have to deal with people like Kevin. Yeah, I mean, I like my current company pretty well. Uh, maybe one day I'll, you know, hate myself and go into game development. But, uh... For now, this is like pretty good, and uh, I've got like a just like a really solid group of people I work with. Great boss, um, and I don't know. Just to confirm, like have you clicked the do. have you clicked the play button in client yet? Yeah, I did. Okay, I assume it's one of the players who has not clicked it. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Um, fair. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I mean, certainly this lifestyle is much easier than game development would be or other types of programming or even programming for other companies game development sounds crazy the crunch is so yeah. much worse than in any other i game. figure you have to care a lot about it and go to the right company and then it's like doable like yeah i game development i i love to get developing games i think it's like so much fun and i've done it for multiple game jams on my own time do whatever i just i just think it's like fascinating but certainly i wouldn't want to go work for ea yeah yeah or like activision where everyone hates their lives turning out the 15th call of duty game it seems like every like big triple a studio is like that though like are there any triple a game studios you'd want to work for it's like just indie teams right and even yeah, that gets crazy I mean, there's also like double a teams and stuff as well like um i'd be curious to work for like for example uh I mean, all of them are going to have crunch to some extent, but even something like uh, like Mimi Mi Games, the people who made Shadow Tactics and... Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I just bought a Shadow Tactics game for my next variety game. I was looking forward oh, to Oh, Shadow Tactics is super fun. And Crozer has played it on stream and would definitely recommend it to you as well. Oh, cool. Um, they described how Shadow Tactics nearly killed them as a company <laughs> but and like was way more crunch than they wanted, but apparently Desperados has gone a lot better um, and they've like grown a bit as a company. Mm-hmm. I wonder what it's like to work for CDPR because the people who work there seem to like it a lot, but there are a lot of reports of crunch. It's also so, just like Poland. I have no idea. Yeah, that is definitely not my first choice country. Yeah. Although, I don't know. It could be fun to live in Warsaw. Or Krakow, depending on which team you're part of. Oop. Uh oh. Tournament that's, match canceled. That's not good. It's your job to reach out, right? Yeah. Okay, chat, it's just you and me now while uh, Jahagis talks with the tournament admins. It's like a normal stream. You're almost the first world country. It it's not just that, it's also just so far. Like, getting a plane ticket to come back for the holidays. Ugh. Hmm. Tia and Crozer both seem to be here. As in, their game is working? No. Oh. Uh, Crozer also said it was cancelled. Okay. Uh-oh. 
Ammo and some Mel are having trouble as well. Yeah, let's see. Uh, apparently, cr for Crozer and TA, it canceled on its own. Yeah, it canceled on its own for us, TA. Right, I'm just wondering. Uh, I, I, I assumed that one of the players had canceled it. Um, oh. But that does not appear to be the case. Yeah. I got, I got plenty of sleep, dude. Don't worry. Yeah, it's not trying to usually be worried for in yeah. terms of sleep. Joe Haggis had to wake up super early for this cast. Yeah. Ugh. A bad it's 8.30. Thing. I'm usually not awake yet, and I've already been awake for three and a half hours. There's been remarkably little bad-talking CDPR on the stream for a Trinet stream. I don't know what you mean. Oh, uh, yeah? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm probably a bit of a fanboy, but certainly uh don't tend to talk too much smack also just because like i don't know have you have you played magic yeah <laughs> all right have you like kept up with wizards of the coast lately yo i own and invoke prejudice <laughs> like <laughs> okay. like part of me is like glad because they made my card worth more money but i can't play it on my edh deck now yeah i mean <laughs> i'm like I, I've been playing Arena with some buddies, and oh my god, I hate every decision Wizards makes. Like, for all the crap that people give CDPR, Wizards of the Coast is the worst! Like, aside from the fact that they, like, have terrible monetary practices and uh, for, like, every way they can, yeah, like, I know nothing Ikoria about is the worst thing ever. I couldn't believe some of the cards that made it to the printer for Ikoria. That set was insane. So not only are there, like, are, is there a new way of printing cards, like, just literally power creeping as hard as they can, but, like, the limited format is just play all the cycling cards or you lose. Um, Wait, they didn't even get limited, is... right? Nope, the limited is unplayable as well. Oh, literally, if you no. get far enough in an arena draft, or if you get high enough rank, and I say this as someone who, who was, uh, I think I made diamond uh, pretty recently in, in the arena, so, like, I play enough limited. And, like, it's literally just all cycling decks, because why would you ever play anything else? You just cycle through your entire deck, get some incidental pings, and then hit, play a four mana card that deals 10 and gives you 10 life. Like, what happened? They used to be so good for making the limiteds at least it's, playable. Ikoria was unreasonably bad. Eldraine was incredibly pushed, but had at least a pretty fun limited. Eldraine was a cool set. I liked Eldraine. Yeah, it destroyed Constructed and had a huge number of problems, but... It didn't really... It, was... it didn't destroy Constructed in the same way that Ikoria did. That, it didn't that, break every format. It had Oko. I mean, Oko got banned in, like, four formats. Yeah, but that's not, like, banning a card from Vintage. Yeah, um, so... Yeah, I, I suppose that's true. Companion mechanic was unreasonably stupid. Literally anyone could see this from a mile away. That This was, like, literally counter to how magic works. And they, the solution for it wasn't even very good. Like, yeah. it still is really problematic. <laughs> it's the first rules change I've heard since, like, or, or like, uh, er Errata since, like, Urza's block. Like, it's literally been, like, 20 years since I've had to do this. I compare and, the like, Oko mistake to, like, a Jace the Mind Sculptor level mistake, or, like, a Stoneforge mistake level mistake. Like, it's bad, but it's not. Like, you sort of understand how it got through. Or, like, a Skull Clamp level mistake. No, I, I understand how... Okio got through. They're just not willing to admit it, which is that was his plus one was supposed to be a minus yeah. one. Yeah. Like literally they flipped a sign and then they were like, no, we just didn't read the power level correctly. It's like, no, this is very clearly meant to be I, different. I don't understand how Luris made it to the printer. Yeah. That card is just bonkers on every scale. I didn't even realize for a long time that it was permanent and not a uh, yeah. creature. Like, <laughs> it's like, pretty absurd. There's no format other than possibly standard where that card is ever going to be okay uh it's not a, it, it wasn't really okay in standard either <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't even know i, I don't follow I mean, standard at all but. people people were like pointing out how many things could have been in the standard but have been banned they're like <laughs> yeah oko and like 17 other things but also i just hate that they print cards like questing beast like no card pisses me off more at least with like master mirror i feel like pretty good about things that got printed uh the game. you get the invite yeah we got the invite Wow, 
Oh, that was a that was a good fill. All we had to do was not talk about Gwent. <laughs> All right, I just get to complain about Wizards of the Coast and Double Masters Premium being like ninety dollars a pack. That's my that's favorite okay. conversation topic on stream. Anything not Gwent related is great. <laughs> All right, we got Getting... some spicy skins going to this cruiser with a new usurper skin. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to very carefully press the F4 key. Amazing. Oh, good call. Alright, approach from the left side. Yeah. Extend your finger just right, and don't crash the game. Oh, uh, so we got... Alright. Thez Gurney deck against Crozier and his... This is a ball deck, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, Super this ball. is a ball deck. Now, he's got a lot of soldiers in hand, so he might be tempted to just keep this. I, I mean, maybe he'll kick, like, some of the poison-related stuff. Um, getting, like, Ramon could be pretty big. Um, oh, well, <laughs> Magni, draw Magni. Magni, for a Magni. Oh, and we're getting Magni another one. draw Roderick. Yeah, so, I mean, I imagine Chrysler's plan is play a bunch of bronzes and hope it's enough. Um, Tia's hand is... Oh, I would think it's unlikely she plays Ethereal round one on blue. But, uh, uh you can Nero Corinthia, kind of right? Yeah. Yep, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. So, I think this just means Teo wins round one. I don't think that's much of a reach. Uh, yeah, although the fact that the engine doesn't keep checking after she's passed does matter. Sure, But sure. I don't really I mean, there's the Noonwraith. You can go to Noonwraith Barghest and you've got a bunch of food for those Ethereals. That's true. Um, although Noonwraith, I guess if you go Bargas first, it's okay. I was going to say Noonwraith might just get yoinked by Amnesty. Sure, sure. Uh, but yeah, so I imagine that Crozier is just considering whether he actually wants to commit the, uh, the Arbalet, or the Crossbowman this round, or whether he's just going to try and save them for, like, soldiers in round three or something. Yeah, this is a bit of a tricky spot. There's not a ton of things you want to play in this hand into the Ethereals. Like, once you realize you're not winning the round against the Ethereals, you're kind of in a weird situation where you have to commit things that you want for other rounds. Just takes the crossbowman. Your greedy fruit comes down, and then... So, Striga just like take out the armor. Striga. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, fair. Oh, what? Uh, just happened. Uh, that was either... The fastest rage quit of all time. Oh, or they got so Shadow says he never sent the second invite, so it must be a bug. Uh, also, Crozier's... Coin was wrong, blue. I see. Hmm. Man, that was shaping up to be a an interesting game. Yeah, oh well. New invite. All right. Well, let's go. Third time's the charm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I uh so I I guess I'd forgotten about Current here. Um Yeah, I want to say that a long round still potentially favors Crozer, but I'm not. I'm not 100 percent on that. Um, the the swarminess of the Etherealist is... does seem to. There's bone talismans, a... remember? Yeah, which can be worth up to 18 points each, which is quite a few. Um, and you can't really play Usurper last or that late or risk a row getting filled. But and you can't just like yeah. chill on the usurper either because it's consumes. You can't like let your opponent keep the, the tokens. But I, I was thinking like you. Is he playing a seditious aristocrat? I don't think there was. Um, fair. I was thinking of things that like or like thirsty dames enjoy seeing the uh, the operatives come down. You can't like necessarily wait on all those. Yeah, there's one imperial enforcers as the only spying payoff, and then two thirsty dames. Right. Yeah, the ratios on this list are 
Interesting. The one route tosser, one in the four series, two thirsty dame, one mage torturer. I wonder how much of that is just like he wants to play a bunch of different cards and doesn't have space versus like he's tested it a lot and knows what he wants. Hold on. All right. It looks like we should exit out of this invite. We should exit out of this invite. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, apparently there was a, a bug for it with a double invite and Chris is going to restart. Should we restart too? Uh, I don't think so. Although we can, I guess we can just save. Okay. I, yeah, I'm going to restart my client. That usually makes things better. Gwent is kind of finicky. Yeah. Um, classic turn it off and on again. <laughs> Whatever works. Well, this should be a pretty exciting match when we actually get to it. <laughs> oh no. Well, at least they're uh, ironing out the kinks now. So these bugs yeah. don't happen when tournament mode goes live. Yeah, and I mean, for the most part, it's been pretty smooth. Just this particular match has had issues. Um, guess the I'll other game that was having trouble get started properly? Oh, that's true. There was one last time as well. But I mean, among like 40 matches, could have gone worse, I guess. Well, only a few of them are taking place with the tournament client, right? It's just the features. Oh, true, true. The F4 press necessary. Yeah, it just uh, flips the, the board. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, I've got Beckless on screen. The chat wants to admire these beautiful deck lists. <laughs> just wonderful. Uh... <laughs> um,. <laughs> We were. I was so looking forward to not having to fill air that now that we have to fill air again, I don't know what to do. Right. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll pull up the deck list as well. Maybe there's more to talk about here. Um, yeah, so SK, both people bringing somewhat, uh, like somewhat unusual SK lists, although not that unusual. But none of them no matter. One, no one taking the bait. <laughs> um... I, I am very curious to see how Crozer's Nilfgaard list works out. Um, yeah, it, it, seems. it seems like it's got a lot of blended strategies. Okay, we've got we've got an invite. I'm accepting the invite. I am too. I'm clicking play. I'm oh, switching I'm... over to our gameplay, and then hopefully, okay. hopefully this will work. We are in game. Oh baby. So T is on red, right? Okay, so Crozer is going first as he's supposed. One thousand years and longer. Wait, was that a different voice for Usurper? Uh, yeah, I think they changed voice actors. Chat was mentioning it to me earlier this week. My dynasty will reign for one thousand years and longer. <laughs> oh, we see it's our like first Boon Talisman. It was like a half Ian McDermott for it, and I'm a little sad to see it not. So this hand for Taya looks significantly worse with no current air access. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if I, uh, if we see something like an early Impera Enforcer, which is probably gonna happen, you can't really play Necker either. Yeah. There is only the one Impera Enforcer, right? So, if the Impera Enforcer comes down in round one. Well, that's... I'm thinking he might play Ramon as well. Oh, sure. Uh, yep. That does appear to be what he decides. It, it's so uh -huh. jarring that Impera Enforcer is not Rolocked anymore. <laughs> I'm so He's used to. Someone who played Spies before they reworked it, and I'm sitting here like, I'm just glad they're not two damage per charge. Oh. <laughs> uh... 
plays the Neckers anyway, so I imagine this means she's not going to try to fight over this round. Yeah, this is probably like Mage Torture into Delete Everything You Love. Yeah. Poor Neckers. Play a 5, completely counter a 4, and go up 4 points. Pretty good. Still gonna think it through. No reason to to rush things. But no, he's not sensi. He's not like Mage Torture is built for this. It's gonna happen, and here it is. No, he's like gonna take a moment and be like, "Hmm, what's a? Do I need this Mage Torture for my coup de gras? It's a real question. Just ready for that info on the Necker. Considering all of his options, including Amnesty on Necker. He does take Amnesty on Necker. Interesting. So this can thrive... At least twice? Yeah, just the... Maybe only once. I mean, if he thrives twice, he's committing... Uh, Vincent. Yeah, that's true. So is this just oh. him saying Amnesty is not going to... Like, I feel like there's so many Amnesty targets in this matchup. So something I hadn't considered before. Ethereal is doomed, isn't it? So you can... Vincent to completely answer Ethereal. Well, you answer one Ethereal. No, because you can use Strategic Withdrawal and answer the other. Oh, true, true, true. So that's actually pretty big. Um, that might actually even change who wins the long round. Uh, if Tia does not Karanthia Ethereal and try and run it through both rows, which would be a bold move. Yeah, this Withdrawal deck certainly has more answers to Ethereal than most decks, between like Empire Enforcers plus Mage Torturer to just like Vincent plus Leader. Yeah, although no Mage Infiltrator, which I think is supposed to be the classic counter, is if you stick a single Empire Enforcer, you can deal with both of them with just Mage Infiltrator. Mm -hmm. Although I guess with Brothmans, you still have access to it. So, we've got... I imagine we're just committing bronzes, right? Like, Yeah, although the Arbalest is a little weird, because, like, <laughs> I guess you can put it on the fruit, but that doesn't feel good. I think he yeah. he's probably waiting for an Arbalest, maybe? Or not Arbalest, a Bargast to come down, so he can at least bleed something worthwhile. Is there, like, a huge reason we're saving this Mage Infiltrator? Or this uh, Mage Torture? Does he... Let me see if he has a second one. I think he does, though. Yeah, there's only the one, but he has Fergus for later. Oh, that's true, yeah. I guess I guess he was trying to think if he needed it for coup. Sure, sure. So now we do see the Bargus to eat the Foglet, which I imagine means that we're good to play uh, Arbalest now. Yep. I say we as if we're Crozier here, but... Uh, I get it. I it's get just it. on the bottom part of the screen. <laughs> Uh, Crozier is quickly running out of plays that aren't incredibly awkward, though. Yeah, he's gonna have to start committing real cards if Taya keeps playing. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, I guess he could also potentially bleed the Foglet, as it doesn't really matter anymore. You can also but, just uh, deal three to the fruit, if you're thinking it's just gonna thrive anyway. Oh, that's true, actually, yeah. I forgot that uh, there's a conspiracy part of Deathwind Arbalest. Yeah. I can mouse over it. I, I keep forgetting that I can mouse over things. This is so nice. Right? Ah, oh, it's great. Wow, going Whoa. for Brothens, though. Big That plays. is a, a big change. Uh, goes for his own Vargas to proc a double thrive on the Necker. Going up by almost 20 points with five charges on board. You gotta imagine Tia's thinking about passing now. I think she'll keep playing as long as she has easy reach. Like, if Vargas plus one of the golds works... I imagine she'll keep going. Like, does Bargast consume Noonwraith into Bone Talisman get there? Uh, let's see, so that would be... Plus two bodies? No, not quite. Yeah. It, I mean, it'd be great if she could use the other Bargast to eat the Night Wraith, <laughs> but no dominance is kind of rough. It does end up committing the beast. That's a poison matchup. Uh, Your stuff that goes tall. Ballsy play. 
I mean, if there's any more spies for Crozer, he can kill that straight up. I think at this point, she's just looking to get value trades out of her cards. Like, she thinks the Beast isn't going to be an important card later on because of all the poison to punish tall units. True, true. So just try to make him commit things. Like, Crozier just played a Brothens into the rounds. It's entirely possible his yeah. hand is just full of important cards. Yeah, true. I imagine we see something like Arbalescent deleting all the little guys. But, uh, maybe not. Who knows? He could also potentially invo that, which might be what he's thinking right now. That gives it bleeding. Uh, right, because I guess that's the thing you least want to consume. Yeah, makes sense in that sense. Hmm. Or maybe he's just trying to deny dominance for longer. But yeah, Possibly? yeah, it's like a 20 point lead now, so this is uh, it's only also... quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, in a couple turns, that ends up giving him extra points, or giving her extra points, right? This beast was only ticking yeah, two more times easily. Yeah. I guess he's assuming that he's just going to pass soon anyway, so it doesn't matter. He doesn't want to keep playing cards. Fair. Does end up playing the other Bargas, presumably to eat the Night Wraith. And now and, and we're... Bone Talisman does not do it still, right? We're, With a we got a 10-point Bone Talisman. Oh, you're right, yeah, so it does just barely get there. Goes for the Vincent, so he's not interested in using Vincent to try and kill the Ethereals. But this do this should secure the round for him. I would assume so. Does... Especially with the Vincent gone, now your Cave Troll's doing something. Don't necessarily want to just throw that away. Uh... Yeah, it would still be a 31 point gap. Or 31 to 47. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so yeah, Tia takes the pass. Crozer commits two pretty big cards, wins the round. Tia commits pretty much nothing, which is, except for the beast. Yeah, and it's um, arguable how big the beast card. even is. Now, there is a Masquerade Ball. Masquerade Ball is huge. There is still a bunch of tolerable potential. But there's no enforcers, and there's I don't believe a way left to deal with two ethereals. Ooh, there's the heaver too. She's uh, ready to deal with the masquerade ball. Wait, is there a heaver? Yeah, Tia's got heaver in hand. Oh, there it is. It was hiding behind Bone Talisman. Uh, <laughs> I was... Seems you just experienced that bug I was talking about. <laughs> I, I did. Except I saw 100% of Bone Talisman. It didn't look bugged. That is funny. Uh, so Roderick is now on specifically either Ku or Van Morlam's Cupbearer. And <laughs> given the nature of Roderick, potentially both. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. Also, though, being able to Ku the Geralt Irden could be huge in round three. Yeah, that's a that's a scary one. Crozier deciding if he wants to play this round. It would be very dangerous to play it. Um, trading Masquerade Ball for a Bomb Heaver in round two is pretty awful. And yeah, yeah he decides that it's too big of a risk. I think the only reason that you would consider pushing there is if you think you just lose if she has the bomb heaver and you want to give her the fewest chances of drawing bomb heaver. Right. But I mean, that thirsty dame on its own can get a lot of value. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Now I assume that thirsty dame does not boost when something transforms into ethereal, does it? Uh, right, that was a pretty cheeky bone talisman, and I'm on board. <laughs> Getting rid of interesting. Classic. I would have thought the bone talisman would be pretty valuable going into this round three, but well, I guess it's not easy to know what you actually want to take with you. Fair. And maybe she figures the other cards in her hand are more valuable. Although I might have said out of trigger is not super important. Go. Not a great hand for Tia, honestly. Uh, just like looking at what she's got, 
She's got a couple of big guys, but I mean, without like her consumes or anything or Osril, is she gonna have enough points? <sighs> Throws Man. away Fergus, presumably to give himself another golden deck that he wants to pull, uh, which will also make doing Roderick into Ku into Fergus stronger. So we are going to be doing double ethereals in round three. I guess she doesn't really have much else to copy here. Yeah. I mean, this does make it so that even if there was still answers to the ethereals, they don't do anything anymore. Fair. Um, although, again, without consumes, I mean, that lock is... Lock does something, yeah. Pretty huge, yeah. Question is, does Crozier play the Masquerade Ball first, or wait? Uh... I feel like you just slam it early, and if it gets answered, it gets answered. The reason to not want to play it early would be, well, one, so you can take the lock a little bit earlier, but also just so that you have tall units on your opponent's board before you start playing Aristocrats so you get better poisons. I think there's enough reason to hold it, but want to hold it for at least a little bit. Well, the locked ethereal is kind of a problem. Uh, again, no consumes to speak of. Yeah, I mean, there's still another ethereal, but that one is done. Yeah. Oh, playing cave troll this time. She's been burned once before. She's not about to get burned again. Uh, there is still the second Van Morlem Hunter? No. He only plays the one. Hmm. So is this just gonna be the invo targets? And you wanna do that earlier rather than later? Or do you just jam the probably ball? Probably wants to invo later? Um, as, well, I don't know. I mean, he, if you, he sees either Fergus or Ku either way. If you invo if he specifically this, wants to... you can Roderick for it to protect your ball. That's true. Oh and it just goes for a Purify. Kind of curious about that. I, if anything, if you wanted to remove the, uh, invulnerability, I, I kind of would have expected him to, like, maybe, like, raw toss her to the left of the cave troll. But, uh, I suppose this works too. Yep, so, <sighs> so ethereals are all set up. Back to Ticken. Not seeing a way of dealing with this. There's Roderick into either Ku or Fergus. None of, neither of those things kill anything. This leader doesn't answer to ethereals. Yep, looks like this one's just going. Yeah. He can always slow it down a bit, or not slow it down, but uh, put a, a little bit more of a cap on it by playing Roderick back row. Just gets the dame down first. Uh, yeah, unfortunately that one's going to be answered by the Striga, I imagine. Yeah, there's no other important targets for the Striga. Tia opening up a pretty wide lead here, 20, 30, or 24 30. points ahead of Crozer right now. Uh, of course, Crozier has some pretty high impact plays, and Tia's running I mean, a little short. But I mean, uh, Tia's got the heaver for the the masquerade ball. This ethereal is still three points a turn for the rest of the game. Yeah, the answer to this Yigern is just the info, right? I guess you can you don't get the death blow on the coup. Yeah, you you don't want a coup Yigern. I'm pretty sure. Although what you could do is make it a spy with Fergus and um, then ping it down with the dice one Arbalest. Can you get both of them? Both Fergus and Cure in the deck, and you only have Roderick. I mean, I don't know what you're looking to do with Ku. Do 
Oh, so it looks like he is going straight for Fergus instead. Uh, I was thinking you could coup the uh, the Roderick. Oh right, this just like clicks through the keeper. <laughs> this is Amir. Powerful leader. Spread out the poison. Uh, if he had more time, maybe he would have done that. Because uh, I think it is actually one more point to do it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty curious about that spreading out of poison, though. Yeah. I... I'm really sure why he did that. Might have I guess been... he, brought... oh, he brought the lock back to his hand. But I, don't... I still don't know why he spread out the poison. I think that might have been just like a rope thing. Yeah, I feel like it had to be. Because what's the reason to kill <laughs> Ethereals uh, instead of like April? Yeah, fair. Second one gets locked. So now the Ethereal is done ticking. Rotosser Prox? No, Rotosser uh, happens after Ethereal, right? Yurden is still going to be big. Oh, wait, does Rotosser have the same bug as, like, Beast does, where it'll still tick after it transforms? Maybe. I know timer effects are really weird, but... That was not a, uh... I guess there's nothing really else to do with the Night Wraith. Yeah. But now the row is filled, which means it can't be Rotossered, and, uh, Serper can't be used. So we've got a full row to make Usurper worse. This invo is... I imagine just being used on the Yigurn. And then a pretty sizable Yirden with no coup access. Yeah. Not that that so, matters. I mean, perhaps the ideal line of play here then is to bleed one of the rats, then play Usurper and not immediately Yoink, and then Yoink and play Rotosser. Ooh. <laughs> interesting, interesting. But we'll see what Crozer ends up deciding here. Invo is the cave troll. Ooh. Huh. Curious. Yeah. Don't hit a... Good, good. Still managing to dodge. I mean, this is looking like Tia's game, right? I don't think Crozer is the points here. Yeah, this Yurgen sticks. Single... The single operative usurper who is probably the saddest guy you've ever seen. Takes the Yurgen. Does she know that this sticks? There could, like, theoretically be a coup and there's still two crossbowmen left, but... I don't think crossbowmen would ever have not been in play yet. Yeah, it's gonna do it. That is a wide Seals point gap. The game. Six points on Usurper. Six points on that. Doesn't doesn't take it. Besides, yeah, I've had enough. <laughs> Taya takes game one. All right, that puts her at one zero. She now has to get through with her Nelf card or uprising or something. Let's see. With her uprising list that may or may not have been intended to be devotion. Yeah, uh, that's a. If we switch over to the deck list again real quick, we've got. <laughs> we've got a deck. Yeah, got Dandelion with Viscota and Visigurd. The Fool Engines with a Bomb Heaver to go alongside two Karak Marines. And an yeah. Evolving card that does not get to Form 3. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see how it does. Uh, Crows are now going to be on blue coin, or on red coin. Sorry. So, you imagine he wants to play. Uh, I mean, if he feel if he felt like he would wanted to play Nilfgaard on blue, then presumably he wants to play uh, his Theorist on red. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Oh, I need to accept. <laughs> Holding the games up. Right. Does that Karak Marine deck have a heaver? It does indeed. 
That's, in fact, I think the reason why it looks like she might have made that mistake. All right, we've got the uh, the green cricket skin. Hoots against uprising, and I will very carefully hit the F4 key. Uh, Same. Have the window in focus. There we go. Yeah, someone else in chat is saying that it was a mistake by Tia at the last minute. Mm hmm So, looking at these round one hands, Crozier has a Neuromancy, but no Ethereal in hand. So he doesn't have the Corinthian combo to make multiple Ethereals in multiple rounds. But... Nah, instead he's got two Foglets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Crosshair has a pretty bad round one hand. <laughs> we will okay. see how this goes. Okay. Yeah. He has access to Egern potentially off of a Neuromancy. So he can still just slam a couple of big boys and probably get out of the round. Yeah, he's still got his Dragon Larva. Larva's a, a real card. Larva is a 5 version gold. Crosshair, a very careful player. I'm sure, you're gonna think this through. It is possible that he thinks he's just not able to push this round and just doesn't want to commit the larva, but I suspect yeah. we're going to be seeing larva. If you're, if you're not, if you have a larva and you're not playing it, that's a, uh, that's counter to how, to monster uh, psychology, I think. It does make you a little bit more resistant to a bleed. If you're worried about that for some reason, I don't know why you would be against the Vice to go to Dandelion deck, but... Yeah. Now he's running Igni, is that right? Um, as his Geralt of choice? Yeah, he is playing Igni. Does decide that he is going to play round one and plays the Larva. I mean, among other things, playing round one as Gurney is pretty easy no matter what deck you're playing. Yeah, Gurney usually wants to win round one. Though I think the ethereal stuff makes it a little bit less important for that deck to win round one. It's pretty it's less it's important, wins. but you do still have an actual leader for round one, and how many decks yeah. can say that? Definitely, definitely. Even these uh, pretty medium hands can put a solid number of points down. But yeah, so Crozier has to dodge these Foglets in hand. He's got, like, Noonwraith, Noonwraith, and Drago Warrior, which fills a row by itself. And then there's a Beast, which is probably going to get pretty big. Yeah, might even be able to beat Baron or something. Can play Egern and Goliath this round. Yeah, it seems like what Crozier needs to do... Oh, he's playing Haunt! Right, right, right. This is the Haunt list. So he's got something oh. to do. That is something to do. And it is just early enough that Tia cannot pass. Yeah, this hand looks a lot better when you realize Haunt's in the list. True. Still a little sad that there's a Brick Foglet and no way to do uh Does he run Karen there? Uh, I believe he so. He does, yeah. yeah. Deciding what to pull. Also, I just alt tap to look at the deck list. Yeah. Is, what is this? Don't even need to Pre -client. do that. Pre-client? And a coming down. I don't think there's anything in Crozier's list that can deal six, so there's no reason to TA. Yeah. Four points per turn. So that is a lot quite of a engine bit. value. Soon it's probably going to be more like six points per turn with its uh, Tritem. Yeah, but I mean, there's five points per turn on Crozier's board right now with three Thrives and a Beast. Suppose so. Some of these Trident things are going to be going to armor as well. One would hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just unfortunately, these two Foglets are going to make it hard to push this all the way. True. So we are going to see the Nidor Wraith come down, get those three Thrives, get that Bargas down. Big tempo. Well, oh, second layer of Thrives. Up 10 points Crozier on Crozier actually coin. pulling ahead against a 6 point per turn board. 
again, his board's just playing for a comparable number of points. This is a... All right, here we go. Five points, let's go. <laughs> Poor Karak Marine. I played for six this time. You know, he's good. Oh, man. Oh, that's right. She broke devotion for Heaver and doesn't have Heaver in the round where the haunt came down. That's unfortunate. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a rough one. Oh, this is very much a whoever wins round one is in great shape kind of game. Yeah, it seems like it would be hard for this NR deck to survive the Gurney bleed. There's also, like, a non-zero chance that... No, nah, there's no way Taya loses uneven. Crazy just can't push far enough. Although, she doesn't have the most plays remaining. But yeah, I mean, six points a turn is... <laughs> yeah. Pretty hard to lose uneven with. You can still play the Visigur and that doesn't feel too bad. Dandelion, Varaxis, and Baron are all things you'd much rather save, but... Well, Visigur at Ideal, you want to play in the round where you have played Dandelion. Uh, he does get gigantic. True. That is a combo. It is a combo. Might see, like, Baron come down here. No, it is Visigur. With seven charges. That is not nothing. Yeah, now Crozier has... No good insects to consume with this Indrega Warrior, so it's just playing for four and triggering thrives. But if he eats two tokens, or no, you would just consume the the Night Wraith. There's still a Night Wraith to consume. Yeah, so he gets a body. Uh, there. Without dominance, also though, this Bargast unfortunately can't eat the the uh, the fruit, which is unfortunate. True. Does just play the Goliath. Still is. Definitely points. This ahead the beast, yeah. He right? is ahead, I think, by one, one, two, three, four, five, and then the beast ticks. So ahead by two. Yeah. Now is, is TM more inclined to play Dandelion here and abandon its uh, chances of boosting Visigoda by two every turn, or more inclined to play something like Baron? I mean, you definitely don't play Varaxis because Varaxis is worth like nothing here and is actually worth points later she does opt for the baron presumably to reset the beast baron all right reset the beast that does give her enough room that she can pass no matter what crozer does that's true given the hand is that true given yes. the deck if there were an eager in here it'd be a different story <laughs> yeah You know, even to be a little more cautious, I, I might have considered using one charge on that Baron there. I was thinking the same thing, that's why I hesitated for a second. Yeah. But hey, she's now kept her charges and gets the little round she wants. Yep. Because of Bricked Foglet. <laughs> so this Varaxis has Prince as a target, right? Uh, yep. And... That's kind maybe of it. Some, some sure. Oh god, Bomb Heaver. I hate say. to see it. Donamir, alright. Oh, so, you, you can Varaxis target Karak Marine for two points. Oh! Now we're cooking with gas! Um. Yeah, meanwhile, Cruiser's hand is <laughs> pretty awful. But hey, maybe the next round will make it better. She's just gotta find the Prince. Just gotta find the Prince. Varaxis on Baron is good to you. Yeah, but the Baron's gone, is the, the problem. Yeah, also Varaxis on Prince is one of the ways that Tia can actually answer Ethereal. Um, oh, Bane is in chat now. Um, I guess his game must be done. Uh, We're going yeah. away again. Poor All right, we got here. our Kud Kudak. Kud... Yeah, it's Kud Kudak, right? Yeah, cool. So, this Varaxis is... Six points. Seven points. Because he resets Visigoda. 
Oh, you can AA. No, we can AA for Karak Marine. Can, I mean, Jesus, I hope we'd at least AA for Radivus Royal Guards at that rate. Oh. Um, Poor Karak Marine. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a Vicegota. I don't know. Vicegota Dandelion is a disgusting amount of points and might just carry the game. Yeah, I, th I think that is that is the, the question here. Can those two cards alone win the game? Does she have another Tridem in deck? She does. But there is, of course, an Igni that's going to eat something. I mean, the Igni is going to kill the Viso when the Viso gets really big from the Dandelion. But by then, the Viso is going to have spread a fair amount of buffs by then, right? So, uh, I don't think Tia has noticed this. But, unless I'm mistaken here... There's no reason not to play Visigoda first. Uh... I don't believe Crozer does any damage to his opponent's board. <laughs> Good ol' Solitaire Gurney. Hey man, he's got an Igni, it's not Solitaire. Oh, Alright, yep, yeah. she's done it. Going she in. Realized, she looked through his list and is like, wait, who cares? Ah <laughs> oh, man. Uh, she's truly facing Red Rain. This is, uh, this is some spice. Crazy with an uncharacteristically fast in Drago Larva. <laughs> All right, it has begun. This is the engine. Not all the engines. Really, just going to be whether this turn for Crazy, but uh, something similar for Tia. Yeah. Gonna depend on how big the Signy gets, I think. Oh, that in your man, he's actually two more points for Tia. Yeah. <laughs> extra, extra proc on the Viso. Extra proc. So, what is that on your likely getting? Caranthia or Detlaf? Uh, it gets Detlaf so you can consume something with your Andrega Warriors, right? Yeah, I guess there's nothing to current here anymore. Yeah, so you get that off, you can you eat that twice, I guess, and that's that. Sure, seems fine. Donamir melee, I guess, because she's trying to play around Igni. Yeah, Igni's the only interaction that matters, so why why make the row bigger faster? I I guess because. Make it big at whatever speed you want. I don't know. Well, you want to keep the Viso alive for as long as possible. Because as soon as the Viso row is in Igni range. is always going to be the Igni target. Yeah. I, I forgot that it's boosting itself every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or rather that Dandelion is boosting it. And this is eventually just going to be like AA for a big Tritum on the turn before the Igni, right? We're just going to stockpile Viso charges until then. And probably wait one more turn. Yeah, probably AA this turn. Next turn, uh... You slam Kira in between John oh, and true. the Tridem. Yep. Although, she's thinking about playing Kira. No, okay, there it goes. Goes for Drummer instead of Tridem. Interesting. Uh, I guess it's one point a turn either way, except that there's eight more points on the Tridem if she had pulled it right now. Whereas mm -hmm. I don't think Drummer gets that kind of value. Yeah, now just spending the charges. Uh, kind of uh, surprised she didn't Rope spend Day? two more charges to put Dandelion at eleven. This is interesting. But I guess she has another turn for the Igni. <laughs> I respect. I mean, it. there's no way. Does, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to just say that's. Perfectly acceptable. I'll get 20 points plus an engine. Like, how many more points is this Viso worth? 16? And, like, you're getting some of those points no matter what, because you can't take the Igni this turn. I think it's just better to take the 20 and kill one of the engines. Unless I'm missing Take the something. shot. Yeah. And he agrees. T 
Tia being like, Well, this is maybe okay. I am 30 points down now. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I think this is just Cruiser's game now, right? I... Like, this just plays for nothing. Nothing. Spalibor doesn't do anything. Yeah, Falibor kills. Falibor is just a, a thing. ten, right? Yeah, no, it'll hit that one in Drake. Oh no, never mind. The larva pops up on the other side, or the Andrega pops up on the other side. But yeah, it'll probably hit an Andrega thing for. No, it's still ten. Who am I kidding? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, I guess we're uh, going to game three. Yeah, I, uh, I thought that Tia getting the long round was like an assured victory, but missing on Sass and uh, getting a big ol' Agni is uh, definitely a problem. Also just having the Baron forced out in round one, like Baron is huge on this board. Yeah, Baron would be a, uh, a 24 minimum. <laughs> and Varaxxus. True. Rexus for the additional like fourteen points. <laughs> it's pretty funny that this wasn't even like I mean seventeen sixteen points off is not the craziest spread. Yeah. <laughs> Although sixteen points off was that the difference between no, it wasn't the actual difference between Visigoda and this the front row, but um yeah, it's a little wow. tricky to calculate exactly how many points. True. We're lost to the misclick. I mean, on one hand, like you also like gave an extra two points by boosting the wrong thing when you boosted the opponent. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, now it looks like we're going to go into game three, which will be yep. uprising versus. Um, Spies. Uh, so this will be. This means that both Ethereal Gurney decks have gotten through. Uh, pretty curious to see where it goes from here. Um, yeah. Oh. Did you just get a tournament match cancelled? I did not. Do you? Uh, yep. Uh, okay. You know what to do. Message, uh, <laughs> message somebody. Should I hit back? Uh, sure, yeah. It just instantly canceled it for me. An unexpected error occurred. Let me uh, ping the other people as well. Okay, I'm going to restart my Gwent client. Yeah, I'll reach out mine as well. Well, this wasn't without hitches, I suppose. <laughs> it was never going to be. Yeah. Okay, and I guess I will... Nope, wait, nope. Immediate invite again. That's faster than I thought. Uh, yep, I have mine as well. Cool. Alright, just gonna tell them that we're all set. Chat debating what the best monster stack is. Oh, apparently uh, Tia says that her timer ran out, and she uh, missed one buff, which then set up the Igni. Uh, yep, 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 yep. That's fine. That is an unfortunate way to lose a bunch of points. <laughs> and a bunch of points it was. It was, that was a lot of points. That was a lot of points. <laughs> Alright, looks like we're going in. Game three. 
game three between Crozier and Taya. Uprising versus this Emir Masquerade ball deck. I am, uh... I'm inclined to say that Masquerade Ball has, has the uh, the edge here, but I'm not 100% on that. Tia's deck is very odd. I feel like... So intuitively, the deck that has a lot of removal and locks should be favored against the deck with Vice Lagota Dandelion, but I am not going to claim to be an expert in the Emir versus Engine NR matchup. Throwing away the, uh, that big old Karak Marine. Ah, what a, truly a tragic day. <laughs> Poor Karak Marine. <laughs> oh. Krezer getting some pretty good mulligans at the end there. Three way two bronzes got an 11 and 14 point card, or provision card. Yeah. So, what is the plan going to be? For round one for Crozier. Is this proactive well, he... play just the dame? Or this does he is like need exactly, to like ball? This is exactly when you would want Amnesty, and it's exactly when he doesn't have it. Uh, um, Amnesty would be huge against his hand. Double drummer, Redanian uh, Knight. Is that what they're called? Redanian Knight? Um, like, yeah. Unless she's burning charges like crazy, you're probably getting something. Yeah. Yeah. Now... <laughs> yeah, this is a... He does just jam the ball. Just wants to win round one. Alright. Now, Taya, again, aristocrats. doesn't have the bomb heaver in her round one hand. This is just the worst, man. So this masquerade ball's gonna kill her devotion and she's never getting use out of it. <laughs> this poor devotionless deck. <laughs> uh, you hate to see it. You really do. Uh, so. Hell, that Varaxis would have been worth more points if he was a uh, stage three and would have, you know, at least buffed soldiers in the last one. Does just take the damage, turn off the engine, take the transform. And then I imagine here we need to save this crossbowman. There are I mean not the soldiers in hand, but yeah, just runs that out. Hold on to sure. the thirsty dame, try to find better poisons a little bit later into the round. True. And Tia kinda has to buff this drummer because otherwise it runs the risk of amnesty. Yep. And that might be a good enough poison that he just starts playing the dame out. Fair. The other option would be, I guess, Mage Infiltrator, just play slow, but yeah. A taste of Norikman, is it? Just takes the... Yeah, I mean, you might as well just like... Oh, are you thinking of Mage Torture? Yeah, that's the other line, I think. I don't think there's another... Right, right, okay. Infiltrator, I heard, I'm like... Oh. It seems like a bit much, but yeah, my bad. <laughs> I'm not gonna my tell bad. you how to play. <laughs> the slow play of playing the most expensive gold in your hands, right? right. When you haven't even used chapter one. Yeah. So now, this is gonna be just a, some absolutely baller value. Yeah. Uh, you get to kill one drummer, lock the other, go up 25 points. There is no way Tia can stay in this round. This is looking like a beating. And this was just for Masquerade Ball and Bronzes. She still has... I mean... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Amnesty's basically a gold. 7. 8, 9 golds left. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of these are removal it, against the engine deck. This does seem like kind of where Crozier wants to be. Um, if he draws Ramon as well... Establishing double enforcer early, or even triple enforcer, depending on when he wants to use leader, could be gigantic. For sure, for sure. Um, certainly, I feel like that's the way that you you can win a lot of matchups when you're when you've got first say as a strategic withdrawal. 
jam a bunch of enforcers and then ask them if they want to eat Fergus or not. Especially against these decks that are trying to stick things in play and need a lot of time to get value on the cards. Enforcers right. just does not give them that time. Does roll out the Thirsty Dame, I guess figuring it's the least valuable card in his hand. Go I don't imagine... Something. I mean, maybe he's pushing here. I... I mean, I haven't played the matchup. I don't know. I know generally these decks are fine just take a long round. But... Oh, I guess he doesn't have first day in round three, actually. Uh, I mean... Assuming the game doesn't bug out or something, I don't know. I feel uh, like if you wanted to play this round, you would, like, roll the... Uh, the Roderick for the, the Ramon. Fair. Uh, how many golds do we got left in his deck? One, two, three, four? It would be a... I guess Ku can actually make it so that he gets either... So or rather that he doesn't have to spend the Usurper if he misses Ramon. Um, yep. And we'll see. Now playing into this, like, if you want to keep going, what's the what's the line now? Make it a spy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, and he hits the Ramon. He does he go for going it. going for it. Okay. It is push o'clock. And he immediately goes for the withdrawal of Ramon to get his second enforcer, uh, enforcer down. It is time for a good old-fashioned smork. <laughs> Smork, smork, smork. Let's go. So as far Further... as spies go, there's the Mage Torturer, there's the Fergus, and the Brothens all in his hand. This is some uh, solid is Vincent Fodder. Yep. I mean, to be fair, what isn't solid Vincent Fodder these days? <laughs> oh, Vincent delicious, was the card probably buffed the most by this expansion. Uh... Power Enforcers? No. Uh, no, I'd say Vincent was buffed more. <laughs> I don't know. Empire Enforcers are uh, certainly a playable card now, though. Um, also, small note here. Um, let's say that Crozer were to Duchess's informant that uh, Carrick Marine. He could actually get 7 value from it. Yeah, he does have Devotion to Nilfgaard, which is all you he need. <laughs> Just cares about the having card. Tools. That interaction got me tripped up the first time too. I thought I couldn't copy my opponent's uh, conqueror, and then chat quickly pointed out that that's not how devotion reads. Fair. Yeah, this Anna is super dead. Yeah, and she's dead as hell. There is no Varaxis in Taya's hand to combo with this prince. This big prince is very Yeah, this, sad. this push is looking real scary for Tia. Like, she's quickly running out of things that actually do anything. This Tridom doesn't do anything. This is such a sad Tridom. Oh, God. <laughs> Man, this, uh... This is just falling apart. Yeah. Uh... I kind of imagine you use Brathens. Yeah, Brathens... You could also invo the Unsafe, and that's fine. You could just take a slow turn and play Mage Torture, get your Assimilate unit in play. That's true, too. Nope, it takes the invo this turn. That was invo Setting on Setting up an Unsafe right? for next round. Yeah. Also denies Varaxis, just in case. But we true, know that true, that's yeah. not there. This could get act not really getting any value since the, the ball is gone. Now, the points gap isn't that big, and the Baron does play for 10 on the current board. But Rothens. I think is... you gotta do something like Dandelion here. Dandelion doesn't really. Oh, Ooh, she early goes for Baron. The Baron the early Baron. Uh. Yeah. It's not very dangerous for Crozier to keep playing here, I don't think. He could opt to take this pass, but I 
guess I don't see why he I would. I feel like you just play these last two cards. You've got two enforcers. Yeah. This mage torture is never getting more points than this. This brothens is never getting more points than this. True. Maybe now you just don't deny green value. I like that. I like that. Just keep the the Vizigrid unplayable. Right. I mean, like that's why I was, I was thinking like you do dandelion last turn because that way at least you can get some value from him on uh, on Vizigrid. But now you might not even get that. The only thing these pings are really keeping in check are either a Kira or a really late Visigoda. And I think it just makes more sense to deny boosts. Yeah. Keeping up a couple charges to make sure you can deal four. Here comes the Dandelion, so yeah, trying to get just a little bit of value, realizing the card isn't really going to be very good in this game. Uh, basically playing as a six, potentially an eight, which is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I assume we're going to see a Duster's Form in here for just double assimilate and tons of value. Yep. Takes the Karak Marine. Marine. Give me oh, those God. points. Take some pings. Knock off the boosts. This is just a 2-0, right? Ooh, we're just killing the Tritum instead. Okay. 21 points down. I don't see a way Tia uh, wins this. I mean, yeah, you get three boosts on the Vistacurid, right? Uh, no, only two boosts, I guess. Not enough. Ooh. 2-0 gets a there. brutal way to finish this series. This is a push all the way down. Uh, seeing Tia's combo pieces just not really come together. Yeah. Um, and be denied by the, the pretty intense pressure that can be put down by a Spice deck with first say. Round one ball to stop things from living. Round two triple enforcers to stop things from living. Tough to deal with. Yeah. So that means that Crozier does take this series 2-1 um, and advances. Well, I mean, everyone's advancing. But, uh, He's Swiss. Advances to, who knows, maybe he'll do another feature match. Ooh. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's check the bracket, though. Um, it was definitely interesting to see, see how that played out. I was thinking, like, oh, long round might actually be a case where, like, uh, Visigoda and Dandelion just takes over. But there's enough control, I think, that it just, it just couldn't even really happen. Like, the defender being taken out by Vincent instantaneously is a real problem. Definitely, definitely. Looks like there's only a couple of matches left. Yeah, it looks like Radu and Gigi Fasil and then Andy and Philo have not reported in. Yeah. So I think um, before the next round starts, I want to hit a quick break so that we can relax for a minute. Uh, sure. Want to reconvene in like two-ish minutes? Three-ish minutes? Okay. Okay. See you guys in a minute.